Um, we are rounding the one year anniversary here of what was at the time your historic trip to Ukraine. You were the highest ranking U.S. official to touch down in, UK, in Kiev. Uh, that was just a few short months after the, uh, the war had broken out. Can you tell us a little bit about that trip? Why was it important for you as the Speaker of the House to go to Ukraine? Well, first let me just say that uh, the people of Ukraine uh, deserve all of our attention, our respect, and admiration for the courage that they have in protecting their democracy and in doing so, protecting democracy writ large. Uh, there is a fight in the world now between democracy and autocracy. Its manifestation at the time is in uh, Ukraine and other places as well, but Ukraine. Uh, I had the invitation to visit Ukraine, uh, took a very distinguished delegation with me there uh, to learn more, to show support, to learn more, and to bring back an agenda uh, for, more, uh, for how we can join them in fighting. Mm -hmm. Now, let me just say, when we went there, it was very, uh, it was dangerous. Uh, we never feared ab about it, but we thought we m could die because we were going, visiting a serious, serious war zone. We had great protection, but nonetheless, uh, a, war, a theater of war. Uh, the courage of the president in greeting us on the street, rather than us just meeting him in his office, was yet again another symbol of the uh, courage of the people of Ukraine. I, I would have hoped that it would have been over by now, uh, but the fact is, is that to the surprise of the Russians, the Ukrainians have m made this a long fight. We never expected the Russians to win. That, that is just, we must win. We must bring this to a positive conclusion for the people of Ukraine and for our country. What is your assessment of what you've mentioned, the role of democracy versus autocracy, the, or the, 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 the battle between a democracy and autocracy. Do you feel that the world is in a better state or in a more difficult state than when you joined Congress? Well, I think that the uh, role of uh, Putin in, in terms of uh, Russia, that is a bigger threat than it was when I came to Congress. That is to say that they, while the wall came down, Putin went up 10 years later, 99, and he has taken it from a democracy, which it was, however, shall we say Russian, uh, to, to a place where it is now where there's no freedom of expression unless you want to go to jail. So uh, from that standpoint of Russia, not as a military threat to us, but as a military threat to, shall we say, Ukraine, and that's where the fight for democracy is taking place. Let's shift quickly to, um, to Taiwan. That was another yeah. big trip that you took, yeah. um, a, a sort of against uh, you know, some, some voices who didn't want you to go. Why was it so important for you to take that trip to Taiwan? Well, let me just say, uh, I don't know what voices you're referring to that didn't want me to go. I, I, I don't know. Did anyone tell you not to go? No. No, nobody told me that. Did anyone relay that? Mm -hmm. Did he, anyone relay indirectly the administration or your colleagues? Nobody relayed? that mattered to me relayed that to me. So um, let me just say it that way. In terms of Taiwan, I've been there before. Uh, I, uh, the support for Taiwan in the Congress has been longstanding, bipartisan, and House and Senate. I was so pleased that so many senators signed uh, a statement of support of my visit, Republican senators of support of my visit uh, to Taiwan. I have absolutely no intention that the uh, autocratic president of China was going to isolate Taiwan and, and say that I should not go there as Speaker of the House. Again, I had a distinguished delegation with me. Mm -hmm. And what did you think of the Chinese reaction to your visit with the military drills and all of that? No surprise. And it's, it's, it, it was cowardly on their part, uh, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. not no, no surprise, no.